This is a really embarrassing video to make because I'm not even that fast. Originally, this video was supposed to be made next year, except that Peter from standupkeyboards.com was so kind to send me his stenography uni hobbyist keyboard. And instead of asking me to review it, he asked me to make a video promoting Plover, which is the video I planned for next year when I was actually good at what I was doing. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Alright, so you must have looked at the thumbnail and thought to yourself, what the hell am I looking at? And you're completely right. What is this? This is stenography, also known as steno. Not to be confused with stega steganography, 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 which is the cipher thing. No, I am not decoding codes and cracking stuff just yet. I'm only learning a new way to type. So what is steno? Steno is the fastest way to type. It is not actually typing. We are coding words. We call them chords because on a steno machine, you press down multiple keys down at once, just like a piano, to output a word. This means that you can go at incredible speeds because each press is, an, is a word. Stenography is mostly used in courtrooms and live TV broadcasts because the thing about steno is that we chord to the sound of the word. Stenography is meant to be as fast as the human speaker. The average person speaks at 180 words per minute to 220 words per minute. And that's ridiculously fast, especially considering that even the fastest typing layouts, like, I don't know, is Dvorak, Colomac, and Workman fast? I don't know. But, well, even if you were fast on them, it'd be really difficult to break through the 200 words per minute barrier. Even if you were fast enough, it's very difficult to maintain that speed for hours on end which is what courtroom writers are supposed to maintain. So if you ever unfortunately appear or wind up in a courtroom, take a look at the stenographer. They're not actually typing on a keyboard. And since I'm not fast, I'll be showing clips of other people going fast just to demonstrate how quick it is. do a demonstration here using a YouTube video to make a YouTube wow. video. Why don't you show him the document that is included here and does uh, bear their signatures? Then there won't be any confusion. Thank you very much. I am sorry, Your Honor. Mine is a Xerox, as you can observe. What document are you about to show the witness now? It is still number 10. I mean, which particular copy of it? It is Mr. Beacon's on set. Your Honor, I believe he has defendant's copy, and I think, Your Honor, yours is just a makeshift set that was prepared afterwards. His copy is an exact copy, as is mine. I got the tail end of the dog. I won't bother the debate about if stenography is going to be replaced by speech-to-text, because I'm not here for that. And what I know at the moment is that speech-to-text is pretty bad, <laughs> especially when it comes to me because of my accent. Google speech-to-text is not very good. The auto-generated captions, they usually have a mistake every one, two sentences. It's not accurate, and I need to subtitle my videos now. For the longest time, stenography has been blocked off from the general public behind college and university classes because the only way to learn stenography is to professionally learn it and become a stenographer. Not to mention that you had to buy their really expensive machines, which are on average $3,000. And the latest, newest, coolest machine is $5,000. And I really want it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in my lifetime. But today, that's not the case anymore. You can learn steno at home with your own keyboard with no extra machines required. All the resources you need to learn steno is online and for free. As on how to steno on your computer, you just need to install the open source program called Plover. I'll explain more about this later. Now, the question, how exactly does steno work? The layout looks really complicated at first, but it's actually a lot simpler than you think it is. For example, you might be wondering why there are repeated letters on the left and right side of the keyboard, but I swear this makes sense. Please bear with me. How the layout works is that whatever on the left side of the keyboard is for the starting sounds of words and whatever is on the right side of the keyboard is for the ending sound of words. And then you have the vowels at the bottom in the middle. Because most words have the vowel sound in the middle of the word, even if it ends with a vowel when you spell it out, like cake. The layout actually follows a steno order as shown here. It is strictly left to right, up, down. So if I wanted to write the word sad, I would press the left S key and then A and then the right D key. And then sad will come out. 
And the thing is, if I did something out of order, it would not show up correctly. Like if I wanted to record the word pot, but I pressed the keys in the order of O, P, T instead. The word that comes out instead will be opt, because the keyboard recognizes keys from the order of left to right. You might also be wondering about the missing keys on the keyboard. As you can see, there is no I key in the vowel row, and many other letters are also missing. On Steno, we can press a combination of keys to get a letter or sound that isn't already present on the keyboard. So to get the sound for I, you press E and U together. In total, it sounds like a lot of things to digest and memorize, and it looks really daunting, and it looks like a gigantic macro keyboard, but it's not. Because there is theory behind how Steno works. The theory is basically how certain keys or sounds works together. It's really just reteaching you the English language except purely phonetically. But it's not as hard as how it sounds like because you already know how words sound, don't you? Here's a quick example. These are all the keybinds for the different vowel sounds that you can make on a Steno keyboard. So how do I stroke the word white? Make a guess. If you guess the fourth answer, you're completely correct. Yeah, you've technically thought of your first word in Steno. It's white. I almost forgot to mention the asterisk key and the hashtag, which is the number bar. The asterisk key on its own will work like a backspace. But when used with chords, it will output a different word from what you're chording normally without the asterisk key. This is to differentiate between words that sound the same, so in other words would be chorded the same on Steno. An example would be C's, 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 C's and C's. Yeah, they're all differently sounded. Usually on Steno, the words that don't need the asterisk key are the words that are more often used. As for the number bar, that's another key specifically just for numbers. So you press the hashtag or number bar with another key and let go, you'll get a number. And now for the last bit of Steno, briefs. So what are briefs? A lot of times in the English language, some words are really, really long, like immediately and those are multiple syllables and the word immediately is quite common so for really common words we have these things called briefs so it basically is a shortcut for just writing out the, the word in its entirety and you can do that for phrases too the thing about stenography is that each stenographer and their machine have their own dictionary that's how each word is written out whatever is called on the keyboard is immediately translated into whatever word it is via the dictionary and the plover software has its own default dictionary of many different words and the dictionary was supplied by Mirabai, the godmother behind the Plover software and the Open Steno project. However, you can add your own words into the dictionary if you wanted to. As for my own dictionary, I've added words that are not found in the default Plover dictionary. So this means that you can write out words that aren't in the English Oxford dictionary with Steno, like your friend's usernames, although you have to add them slowly one by one. But that's how dictionary works, you slowly build it up. And as for me right now, I use Steno to actually send Discord emojis and I've reached a point where I find it a lot easier than doing it the old way. <laughs> there are many, many briefs to remember, especially if you want to be fast on Steno. So that's the bulk of the difficulty in Steno, remembering briefs. I've been at Steno for about a month already and I go at about 30 words per minute. But on really common phrases and etc, I do go at 70 words per minute right now. And it's still a big wall when you're trying to go at ridiculously fast speeds. Generally, Steno really felt like playing 2DX to me where every single step is a wall. <laughs> but I found that pretty fun. It really feels like you're playing a game. There is so much progression when it comes to stenography. As much as I'm learning this for the speed, it is actually a really fun hobby. Most people on the Plover Discord server, which is a really nice place by the way, they picked up stenography for pretty much the same reasons as well as mine, because it is actually fun to learn how to use this. So if you are interested in learning how to steno yourself at home, you can do that with your own keyboard and Plover. Just head to Plover's GitHub page and download version 4 of Plover. Most people and I don't really recommend the stable version 3 release because it lacks the plugin manager and hasn't been updated in 4 years. When Plover is installed, you can just click the radio button for enable and your keyboard will now steno using this conversion. However, there is one thing to note. If your keyboard doesn't have N-key rollover, you can't really steno. So what is N-key rollover? Well, some keyboards have only a 6-key rollover, which is where if you press down 6 keys, it will register all 6 keys pressed down. But the 7th key cannot be registered. And that's why a lot of 7-key Mania players make sure they get N-key rollover keyboards, because if they were going to hit a 7-key chord on the game, their keyboard wouldn't sense it if it wasn't an N-key rollover keyboard. 
However, even if you did not have Anki Rover keyboard, there is a way to still use Steno without it. There's an option in the setting called Arpeggiate, and it lets you slowly press out the keys and then press spacebar to complete the word. Although it's not really recommended because on Steno, good form is pressing down keys all at the same time. So it's really recommended that you get an Anki Rover keyboard, which is most gaming keyboards. Also, something to note is that most keyboards are staggered, so it's a bit annoying to press down keys, especially with the keycap shapes. It's recommended that if you're using a keyboard, you could flip your top row keys upside down so it's easier to press down multiple keys at once. But if you can't stand the stagger and you have a little bit of money or a 3D printer machine, you could print out your own Steno keycaps. The interesting thing about these keycaps is that the stem on the keycap is offset so that when you put it onto your keyboard, the keys will line up straight. So that will really help if you want to try and feel around if you're into Steno and have a 3D printing machine or don't mind paying some money for someone to print it for you. Otherwise, there is the hobbyist machines section on the GitHub page where they show different hobby machines that people are selling and making. Hobbyist Steno keyboards run from about $80 to over $130. It is pricey, but it's still much cheaper than actually buying a stenography machine. Once you've gotten your hardware figured out, you can head to Art Recording or Learn Plover to learn some Plover theory and Steno. You should also join the Plover Discord server because it's a really great place if you have any questions because they're really nice and none of them ever judges anyone for having a slower speed or asking something that you might think is stupid. Art Recording and Learn Plover are more like textbook websites. They're for theory. And if you want to practice, there's also Typey Type which is where I used to learn the layout of the keyboard and it's really great. It really reminds me of those learn QWERTY finger positioning typing websites when I was learning QWERTY. Typey Type is great because it has lesson overviews which shows you what you generally need to know for each lesson and they also split up lessons a lot so it really does feel like progressing through a game. Other than Typey Type, there's also Stenogic which is a website that's a little bit more suited for drilling than learning per se. So these are all the resources you generally need to learn Plover Steno. And that's about it. I might have missed some things in my video, so I highly recommend watching Eric's video on Steno and Plover, so go check him out. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about stenography and might even be interested in trying it out. It is very much like a game, so it doesn't hurt to try. And it's just a lot more accessible nowadays to the general public compared to back then. So why not just give it a go? And thank you so much to Peter for sending me this uni keyboard. I really love using it. I think I'll be putting up uh, my own review on it on Not Tokaku. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.